Today we're going to be changing the power door lock actuators. The problem I'm having with my power door lock actuators is when the weather gets warm, the actuator stops working. The door lock latch and actuator assembly is located here. To get to it, we need to remove this door panel. I'm going to pop off this little panel here and then remove this Phillips screw and pry the door handle trim and remove this. Then remove the carpet in here and undo this Phillips screw. And I can pop this panel back and disconnect the electrical connectors. One more Phillips screw to remove here. I'm just going to remove this little panel and undo this Phillips screw. Pop off this triangle. Two more Phillips screws to remove underneath the door panel. Okay, now we can pop the clips from the door panel by pulling it outward. And then pull the panel up and away from the door. Next, we're going to pull back some of this weather stripping plastic. To get these cables out, we need to release one Phillips screw that holds the door handle on. And then pull this forward and away from the door. And then we can disconnect the cables, pulling this up. Okay, here we are inside the door. This here is the door lock, and this is the door lock handle actuator, which is this rod right here. If you look closely at the back, that's the lock actuator rod right there. This here is the door lock and latch actuator assembly. It's connected to an electrical wire here, which I'm just going to squish the tab and remove the connector. Next, I'm going to remove these three Torx bolts that hold the latch on. And one more 10 millimeter nut over here. Not at all, the bolts are loose. I'm just going to hold on to the latch assembly and pull it out. So here we've got the lock rod. To remove it we're just going to pull this white clip back and then the rod will pop out of the door handle. In order to remove this handle rod we need to remove this door handle. To do that we need to remove three 10 millimeter bolts. One here, one here and one more 10 millimeter bolt on this side. All right outside the car I'm just going to remove the door handle from the body. This here is where the lock rod attaches to the door handle. I'm just going to release this white tab up and use a screwdriver to open up this tab here while I pull on the lock rod and just release it like that. With the lock rod and handle rods free I can then proceed to remove the latch assembly from the car. Okay so just to clarify outside the vehicle this is the door handle and this little white piece with the tabs on it goes inside of the door handle and then the handle rod goes inside of here and locks into these tabs. This here is how the handle rod will go into the door handle. And use a screwdriver to skin this tab outward and then the handle rod can come free. Now by removing this 10 millimeter bolt here you can actually change the key cylinder on the car if you need to. This here is my old latch and actuator assembly and this here is my new assembly. So here we've got the door lock and latch assembly out of the car. As you can see these wires here that lead to the interior door handle control the latch and this one here controls the lock. This here is the electrical diagram for the door lock control. As you can see this here are the switches for the door locks on each door and this here are the unlock detection, unlock and lock switches that are located within this actuator unit. Here are the motors inside of the actuators. They just cycle polarity for lock and unlock. As you can see they're all controlled by the integration relay which is also connected to the theft deterrent ECU. So here I've got my door latch connected to my conductivity tester to show you how the unlock switches work. If I put my key in the unlock position, as you can see the circuit completes and that tells the computer to open all the doors. It's also independent of the lock position, as you can see, and tells the computer that the key lock itself is used to unlock the door as opposed to criminal mean. Now if I connect my tester to the lock side, when I turn the key to the lock position, it tells the computer to lock all the doors. Finally I'm going to connect to the unlock detection switch and that basically tells the computer what position the lock is in and if to set the alarm. Now if I try to unlock the door, I apply 12 volts to the actuator. As you can see it's trying to move but the motor on this one is too weak to actually move the lock and I can reverse the polarity to lock the door. This actuator seems to be working a little bit better. I'm going to open up this assembly so we can have a closer look to see how this thing works. Remove the screw, remove one more screw here and then I can pop off the cover. So this here is the latch where it latches onto the door and then this assembly here is the door lock and this black box here is the actuator assembly where the motor is held. Now if I pretend to latch this door with the screwdriver here you can see that with the door unlocked, the latch unlatches. However, if I lock the door and then latch the door in and try to open it, you'll see that the actuator does not allow the latch to open and therefore the door is locked. I'm going to go ahead and remove these two screws here that hold the motor assembly to the latch. Then I'm going to use a screwdriver to lift up on this cable here and remove the actuator assembly from the latch. So there are these two pins here. I can use a screwdriver and pop out and then again pop out the pin on this side and then I can remove this white pulley from the motor on this side and on this side. So here on this side we've got the motor shaft and then on this side we've got the key unlock detection switch. Now this is a sealed unit, there aren't any screws to take it apart so I'm going to have to break it apart to see what's inside. And 
just opening up this housing here. And that's what we got inside. Now it's kind of unfortunate that Toyota designed it like this where you have to glue the cover back on once you service the motor. Now inside this actuator we've got a standard DC motor along with a spiral gear that turns this cam like profile gear. And on this side here we've got the little actuator that moves. As you can see there are two little electrical contacts here that connect with these here. And that tells the computer if the lock is locked or unlocked. Now if I install this little arm onto the cam gear here, you can see it follows the profile as I turn this clockwise causing the lock to lock and then when I turn it counterclockwise it unlocks. Moving along here if I remove the cam gear as you can see it's got a little stopper as well as a spring inside here. Next I'm going to remove the motor just use a screwdriver and pop that out. It's a standard DC motor and these can be rebuilt or replaced. Then I'm going to reach in and grab the circuit board and finally here we've got the door unlock detection switch that detects the position of the key. So here we've got the basic lock and latch assembly torn down to the mechanicals. As you can see here we've got the latch handle and this here is the lock. So as you can see in the unlock position when you engage the door handle it engages this white nub which engages that white plate at the back there which moves as you can see and therefore disengages the latch when you open the door. However, in the lock position, this knob moves over and no longer engages with that white plate. Therefore, the door is locked and it's pretty much disabled your door handle. Now, the reason why this lock has so much play in it is because this engages with the unlock detection switch on the actuator. And that's there pretty much to tell the computer the position of your key in the door handle, if it's in the unlocked or locked state, and if to unlock all the power door locks on the doors. Now this is pretty much what's inside of a power door lock. Before we put in the new unit, I'm just going to plug it in and make sure that it works. I'm going to cycle the locks. Next I'm going to install the replacement latch into the door. Then I'm going to replace the door handle rod. Just pop that into the white clip. And close the white clip down. And then I'm going to replace the door handle into the body of the car and replace this 10 millimeter bolt. All right, to replace the lock rod, we're just going to pop that in and then push this white clip back over the rod. Now the latch is installed, I'm going to go ahead and replace the three Torx bolts that hold in the latch and then replace this 10 millimeter nut. Then I'm going to replace the electrical connector that goes to the door latch. Then I'm going to feed these new cables that go to the door handle the plastic. Then I'm going to replace the weather stripping plastic. I'm going to use an upholstery tool remover to remove broken clips and replace it with a new one. Next I'm going to replace the interior door handle. I'm just going to hook on the cable like that and then the lock cable like that. Then I can install it onto the car body and replace the Phillips screw. Next I'm going to replace the door panel by hooking it on the top and then popping in all the clips. Then I'm going to replace this Phillips screw. Then I'm going to replace the power window and door lock switch and then replace the Phillips screw. Then I'm going to pop on this cover to the door handle and then replace the Phillips screw. Next I'm going to replace this triangular cover by popping it down. One more Phillips screw over here and then pop on this cover. Finally we're going to put in the screw on the bottom. Finally, we're going to test that the power door lock works properly and we're going to test that it works with the remote control. And we're also going to check that the key lock works and that the door opens and latches properly.